transition pitches for a guy called Kenny Everett, who was an amazingly unique disc jockey in Britain many years ago, but more than a DJ, he was a comedian and a TV presenter with a unique delivery that was instantly recognizable. And you realize there's no commercial breaks until next year. He was born Morris Cole and he was very religious as a child. He came from a very religious Catholic family. In fact, he spent time in a seminary for about uh, a year and was going to become a priest, I think, at one point. And then he got into radio, pirate radio to begin with, then the BBC, then commercial radio, Capital Radio in London, and moved on to TV and made a movie and so on. He was very famous for being this madcap, zany, you know, when we use these words, madcap, zany comedian. But at the same time, he had tried to commit suicide and came very, very close, actually, and had many suicidal thoughts. And when people would interview him, he'd tell stories from his life and would go, Oh, God, please take me now. And somehow was very, very unhappy with his existence, even though he had been very, very successful and his talent had shone for a lot of people. Now, there is a personal connection here because when I was in my teens and in my 20s, he was my radio idol. He was so brilliantly creative and inventive and funny all the time. Uh, I really, really idolized this guy as uh, a radio DJ. Then weird things happened because I ended up working in the same radio station as him. And it was such a shock to my system to be working alongside this guy I'd idolized that I actually had nothing to say to him, really. It was just like, oh my God, it's him in the flesh. Here he is. He was a good friend of Freddie Mercury in those days, mainly because it was Kenny Everett who on the radio kept playing Bohemian Rhapsody over and over again when nobody had ever heard of it and said, this should be a single. And of course, it was released as a single and became a massive hit. But he was gay and bullied a lot in his childhood, apparently, uh, by people who called him a sissy and thought he was effeminate and so on. And this stayed with him. That and his Catholic guilt over being gay led him to be married at one point and to take a long time to come out. In fact, he was outed rather than volunteering the information. So he was depressed a lot. He seemed to hate himself because of the gayness. He just never seemed happy behind the facade of uh, success and riches and fame and so on. So he died in 1995 and I decided to do his transition pictures. When he arrived in that symbolic cave I always see, he did so almost like he'd fallen down a chute. And when he landed, it was like immediately action. Oh, where's God? Where's Jesus? Why are they not here to meet me? He spoke like in that heightened tone. And when there was nobody there and he was a little disappointed, he just set off walking. He saw the tunnel, thought, OK, that's where I'm going. And off I go. And he was really enthusiastic about this process. Phew, thank goodness that life was over. That was no good. Like, unbelievable that he thought of himself that way. That life was no good. I screwed up badly. Let's move on. And he went at a lick up the tunnel. Can't wait for this to be over. For his beliefs to be honoured, to be justified. And there is the dome thing I always see. Symbolic dome of light in a little chamber. He's a little confused by what's expected of him. This is not what he was thinking would happen. This is not what he'd been told by his religion would happen. But, hey, maybe there's more to it, he thinks. And he goes and he puts his hand up to the dome. And as he does so, it just pops like a, a boil. Pooh! And you know that expression that kids, really small children, have on their face when a bubble bursts for the first time or a, or a balloon. 
That's how he felt. Before him was this burst dome. And he peered in. What's going on? I don't understand. He walks out of that little chamber and there's another tunnel that somehow he'd missed the first time in his eagerness to get where he was going. And he sets off up there now. Oh, I've got to go up here now. Okay. For him, it was very much like when you get off a plane and you know you have to get to baggage claim and you go down one corridor after another corridor and an escalator, then up another escalator and round a corner. and It's that sort of thing. Methodical, directed, on to the next thing. A process. And what I realised was that that first dome that he was so eager to get into represented his faith with a capital F. Those were the illusions that had been indoctrinated into him as a small child and which he'd carried through with him into adulthood. None of them real, all of them based on superstition and hand-me-down wisdom and disinformation. And he'd invested in this, his emotions, his beliefs. So much so that when he got there and found out that his faith, with a capital F, was essentially made up, it was a shock to his system. And it seemed like the showbiz him, the personality, the humour guy, really died at that point. It had survived long enough to be disappointed and disillusioned. And what was left was Maurice Cole, the real guy. Slightly down, lower key. Less enthusiastic now, because now came the real finality. That was the showbiz finality, the institutionalized finality. This, now, was the real one. He walks a little slower up this tunnel. And there at the top is the real deal. And he stands before it and stares at it like, oh, this is how it ends, really? This is for me? This is what I'm supposed to do. He's significantly humbled by what has just happened. Less buoyant, less frothy. Okay, here goes. There was trepidation here now. He was being asked to take his ascension seriously. Whereas before, it was just something he went through. Yeah, it's what we're told happens. We get to meet Jesus. It's all good. None of that was right. Now was the real deal. His move from mortal to immortal. Form to formless. From ignorance to understanding. And he went over to the dome and he stuck his head in. And I thought, right now is my chance maybe, to see what is on the other side of this dome. I mean, it's only a metaphorical dome, but these things seem to happen, so why can I not go beyond the membrane of the dome and see what is beyond there? And I aligned with his consciousness and tried to perceive what he was perceiving inside the light. And although I couldn't see anything in this, there was a feeling of being pulled apart in a gentle, loving way. Being pulled apart. And I realise why I'm never allowed beyond this point. Because this is a portal into a much higher state of consciousness. It's rather like being on the first floor of a building and suddenly expecting to get to the eighth floor. You need an elevator. And this portal is an elevator to a higher realm, a higher consciousness, a higher state of being, 
however you're going to classify this. Something that I cannot possibly understand, uh, cohere with, even grasp at my low level of human consciousness. It's not like somewhere you go to, which is how we like to perceive it. That's not how it works. Basically, you're here, and then you're not. And what is carried forward is your soul, which is like your universal passport. And I guess your karma, which is your baggage that you take from lifetime to lifetime. That's my understanding of it. I could be wrong, but that's what it felt like. That you're there, and then you go through the dome, and then you're not there. Your individual consciousness joins with universal consciousness. And you leave behind everything that was you in this lifetime. And that's what happened to him. He stuck his head in, and before he could pull it out again, he fell. There was no real barrier there. He just fell into it and vanished. As you would into a river or an ocean or something. He just fell into it and it enveloped him and he went. But he didn't go anywhere. He just was no longer. We are the ones who have Kenny Everett still. What the universe is interested in is the soul, the karma, and the lifetime lessons that have been learned. That's where there's a reckoning later on. But he was left behind. And what it took to take that step into the dome was trust that all is well. That the universe is taking care of us at every level. Faith with a little f. The first chamber, faith with a big f, blown apart, shown to be of little worth. Reassuring to mortals, perhaps, but of no use in the spiritual framework. The other chamber, after he'd been humbled by the first one, by having his expectations blown apart. The second one, faith with a little f. And belief that all is well. And it is. That's what I learned from Kenny Everett's transition pictures. All right, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, Subscribe, like, share. I'd be very grateful. Follow me on Twitter, if you like, at Cash Peters. Otherwise, I'll see you soon, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.